we used to leave our cars on you know, unlocked and everything. The Franklin County Sheriff is asking drivers tonight to stop being an easy target for thieves. New details tonight about what led to an officer-involved shooting. Drop, drop the knife. The bone-chilling video from a Louisville police officer's body camera. And trying to calm concerns, what UK school leaders have to say about the future of its Robinson Scholars Program. This is WQIT News at 5.30. Good evening. Investigators call it a crime of opportunity. Tonight, the Franklin County Sheriff is asking people to please lock your car doors. Deputies are investigating a string of car break-ins in at least two neighborhoods, and all of the thefts have one thing in common. The cars were unlocked. Kristen Kennedy shows us some other ways to avoid becoming a victim in our top story at 5.30. Half a dozen people living in Evergreen Estates and the Coolbrook subdivision woke up this past weekend victims of thefts. Home is supposed to be safe. Billy Joe McKinney has lived in the area for a few years. She and some others we talked to say no one's ever broken into their cars, but they know it happens. We used to leave our cars un, you know, unlocked and everything, but due to all the criminal activities around, we just don't trust it. And we just pulled down to the bottom of the house at night. The sheriff says almost all of the victims left their car doors unlocked. Nine times out of ten or 99 out of 100, they're not going to get in your car. They're going to go on to the next one because it's too much trouble to try to get in the locked car. The sheriff is asking drivers to use common sense, lock doors, hide valuables, and park in well-lit areas. We used to live in a world that was more trustworthy, but now, for whatever reason, it's not. So you just need to be smart and lock your cars because you can't trust people today. So far, the thieves, Sheriff Melton says, have gotten away with purses, cash, electronics, and a handgun. In Franklin County, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. The sheriff says they suspect juveniles are behind the crimes. They're working with Frankfort Police Department to see if some of their recent theft cases are connected. The investigation into an officer-involved shooting in Louisville continues. Police say they shot and killed a man Monday morning after he came at them with a knife. And tonight, police are releasing body camera video from that shooting. Sean Moody's at the live desk now. He takes a look at that video, but we want to warn you, the video, Sean, is graphic, isn't it? It is, and the Louisville police chief, though, said he wants to operate with full transparency. That's why the department put the officer's body camera video up on YouTube for the whole community to see. Now, again, I do want to warn you, some people may find it disturbing. It shows the shooting as well as the aftermath. We'll go ahead and show that video right now. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. That's what one of the officer's body cameras shows as they pull up to a domestic call early Monday morning. Police said that man, Darnell Wicker, was armed with a machete-like knife. Now, after he went down, the officers handcuffed him and called for medical help. Then they go and clear the nearby apartment. As they begin to process the scene, people nearby ask the officers why they're not trying to help Wicker as he's down on the ground. Yeah. Louisville Police Chief Steve Conrad said they're still reviewing what happened early yesterday morning. Now, the two officers who fired on Wicker are on administrative leave while the department's public integrity unit looks into the case. At the live desk, Sean Moody, WKYT. Sean, thank you. Banks has been with the department since 2008, and the other gentleman has been there since 2014. Friends and family are remembering a woman killed in a crash in eastern Kentucky. Our county by county coverage at 5:30 begins in Pike County. State police say 54-year-old Katrina Little was driving on Kentucky Route 195 in the Lookout community when she lost control of her truck. That truck hit a bridge and flipped into a creek. Little was pronounced dead at the scene. One of Little's friends says she had a kind heart and everyone loved her. To be like that, like Katrina, they were to take lessons from it. Troopers say Little was not wearing her seatbelt when the car crash happened, and they add that alcohol was not a factor in the accident. In Mercer County, an update tonight on the case against a teenager accused of murdering a classmate. Police say 16-year-old Trent Easterling shot and killed 17-year-old Tristan Cole in April. Two other teens have also been charged with tampering with evidence in the case. Easterling was supposed to have a hearing today. He was not there, but his public defender was, and he asked the judge for a new status hearing date. 
prosecutors say they are still working on collecting and preparing evidence for the trial. They say that could take another three months or so. Easterling's next hearing is September 13th. And in McGoffin County, state auditors say a Mack truck valued at $35,000 owned by the county cannot be accounted for. Our partners at the Herald Leader report county officials say the truck is missing, but auditors say they have no evidence that Judge Executive Charles Doc Cardin had reported the missing truck to state police. The audit was a review of the county's finances through June 2014. The truck was still listed on the county inventory records. The auditor's office says they have not received information that the truck has been found since then. They add that the county's lack of control over assets created a risk that county proper property may not be adequately insured. Now, the stormy pattern we've seen this summer is back again. We're tracking storms popping up across the area. Meteorologist Jim Caldwell has an early look at the forecast. And we're tracking one right here in Lexington right now with some pretty heavy rain situated uh, over the station. You can see back toward uh, the downtown area as well. So plenty of heavy rain showing up around here. This is just one location. Many spots getting in on it. That's what it looks like on radar. And this is what it looks like when I try to look westward out toward the, the downtown area from here in the station. So so a lot of heavy rain involved with that particular thunderstorm. Here's the overall look across central and eastern Kentucky. A scattering of heavy rainmakers, good little thunderstorms that have gone up here over the past little bit. There you see another strong one uh, that's in position there across parts of Nicholas County, again in Robertson County, and also into Fleming County where we see some pretty heavy rain and loads of lightning showing up. One of the stronger thunderstorms that we have across Kentucky. Another one that continues to uh, kind of pulse up here uh, is one across Estill County there. You see it showing up quite nicely with some heavier rain, loads of lightning again, and that stretches even into uh, parts of Madison County and around Georgetown. You are getting in on some of this action as well as these storms are coming together. That's just a few that we have today. We'll have even more as we get into the day tomorrow, and all of them have the potential to produce some heavy amounts of rain. Now, when I come back to the full forecast, we'll break down the threat of that heavy rain and show you exactly where it's coming from. New tonight, we've learned that a former Knox County Board of Education member who was forced to resign is running for office again. Dexter Smith resigned after video surfaced of someone else taking the GED for him. In an affidavit, Smith signed that he is eligible to run for the Board of Education again. One of the requirements for eligibility is a high school diploma or GED. Smith did not want to comment. There's been growing concerns that a popular program at UK could be cut. The Robinson Scholars Program is meant to help Eastern Kentucky students attend and succeed in college. But recent budget issues have sparked some rumors. As Garrett Weimer tells us, new at 530, school leaders want students to know the program isn't going anywhere. UK's provost told current students there will be no change to their scholarships or the level of support they're getting. But many in the Robinson Scholars Program here today weren't satisfied with the answers they were getting about the future of their program. At a meeting on campus this afternoon, UK Provost Dr. Tim Tracy spoke briefly about reorganization and restructuring programs, including the Robinson Scholars. Then he took questions from dozens of students, alumni, and parents of the program. There were a lot of questions and a lot of concerns for more than an hour. At times, the students got heated. Many were worried that realignment and cuts will hurt the services that help them as first-generation students from Eastern Kentucky. I think they, they I hope they had, a, they felt they had a chance to uh, express their opinions and their voices, and I, I um, it was good for me to hear those voices, and uh, it's part of what we'll put into our thought process as we continue to uh, the excellence of the program. Students are especially upset that two of the program's staff members were let go as part of the restructuring process. They described them as family members. The provost said, we did what we thought was best, and administrators hope students in other programs will be able to learn from Robinson Scholar's successes. At the University of Kentucky, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Other staff members in the meeting told students they want to set up a series of conversations to continue to unpack their concerns. Tonight's good question is about something I personally have never heard of or seen before. Rick says, I saw a black and white American flag flying in Meadowthorpe neighborhood in Lexington. I've never seen one before. My question is, what does a black and white American flag mean or stand for? Well, 
First of all, we're working on some limited details on this because we don't actually have a picture of the flag he's talking about, Rick is uh, referring to, and we're not able to speak with the person who owns the flag. So we'll do the best we can with this one. Uh, the, uh, there are some generic, here are some generic images of a black and white American flag. And some people believe this flag is a call for change and a symbol of freedom of expression. Some have also used this flag as a symbol of the economic re recession. The original concept for the black and white American flag depicts the past, present, and future of all black Americans. The black on the flag is the backbone or background of African Americans, their sacrifice in this country. Now, there are critics of this flag who say there's no need to display a separate flag when the red, white, and blue traditional flag represents all Americans of all races and backgrounds. So some differences of opinion. To submit a good question, send an email to goodquestion at wkyt.com. Still ahead on WKYT, plans for a massive Ferris wheel along the Ohio River are up in the air. Why the developers' plans have been rejected. I'm Bill Bryant. Governor Bevin uses an executive order to reorganize more of state government. Also, the latest on the presidential race, including a fundraiser for Donald Trump on the Kentucky border. The bottom line is ahead. Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Governor Bevin continues to shake up state government. And presidential candidate Donald Trump is making a campaign stop not far from Kentucky. Bill Bryan has the details in the bottom line. Good evening. Governor Matt Bevin's shakeup of state government continued today with an executive order that will combine three boards into one. The Crime Victims Compensation Board, the Board of Tax Appeals, and the Board of Claims will be merged on October 1st. The current boards will be abolished. Responsibilities will then be carried out by a new Kentucky Claims Commission. The governor quoted in a release as saying that past board members have gotten some extravagant compensation. The Public Protection Cabinet says the move will save tax taxpayers' money and get about $2 million in payments moving to victims. The Republican White House ticket will make a stop close to Kentucky. Donald Trump and Mike Pence will be holding a fundraiser near Evansville next Monday. It will be held at the home of a southern Indiana businessman. Just as it was the case earlier this summer when Trump visited Lexington, he will arrive and leave privately. No public appearance is scheduled. The Courier Journal reports the minimum donation for a couple to get into that is $10 thousand dollars. A photo with Trump would require a twenty-five thousand dollar donation. Trump campaigned in North Carolina today where a new poll gives him a slight lead. Hillary Clinton was in Florida where it is also a tight race. Clinton is enjoying a lead in most national polls, but her campaign is having to push back after a lawsuit was filed by the parents of two people, Americans that were killed in Benghazi. Patricia Smith and Charles Woods filed civil actions. Meanwhile, the Associated Press reports Clinton is expanding the map of states that she is targeting to win to now include Arizona and Georgia. Independent conservative presidential candidate Evan McMullen said today he hopes to compete in all 50 states. That's despite having missed the filing deadline in many places. McMullen says he has an experienced team looking into ballot access. Bill Bryant, WKYT. Plans to build a Ferris wheel along the Ohio River in northern Kentucky may be on hold. The city of Newport and a St. Louis-based company are planning to build a Ferris wheel along the river, giving people panoramic views of Ohio and Kentucky. But the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says the project could weaken the levee system. The agency is asking the developer to look for other locations and submit more detailed documents. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Tracking plenty of rounds of showers and thunderstorms out there today. Now, they're very scattered in nature, but when you get caught under one of them, you certainly know it because it is very intense as far as rainfall is concerned and a lot of lightning going up with many of these that have uh, also been working through the area. Let's check out on one of the stronger uh, areas of concern here. That's in the Robertson County. You get over into Fleming County where most of it's now lifted, but now closing in on Maysville as well. And this kind of loops all the way back into parts of Fayette County. So it's all attached in one general thunderstorm here. But again, the heaviest stuff is still north of Lexington, but we're tracking some heavy stuff right around us here at the station as well, covered up with good soaking rain across a small little section of Fayette County. It was uh, off to the west earlier.
Let's go to the north now and track that thunderstorm. And you can see lightning associated with it. There's Mount Olivet as well with more lightning showing up there, meaning it's uh, more of an intense thunderstorm. And plenty of gusty winds, probably around 40, maybe 50 miles per hour with some of these thunderstorms that have developed out there today. Let's move to the south. We're getting in now to parts of Estill County where we're still tracking heavy rain. And this has been a very slow mover, picking up probably an inch or more in the past hour or so. So we'll watch for some of the creeks and streams to maybe swell in this area because that one's not moving at a rapid rate at all. And then back to parts of Fayette County and Scott County where we're tracking that one little tail end of that uh, that's curved back into to Fayette County. So heavy rain, plentiful out there today. Our high resolution model keeps pockets of those showers and thunderstorms alive through the rest of the evening here. And then you notice they continue lifting in from the south. Eventually it'll clear up. But overnight, that's how long it's going to take. And then tomorrow, we'll start feeding those thunderstorms again because we've got plenty of moisture that's going to be streaming in here. This, from that low that's kind of meandering along the Gulf, it's just really opening up a tropical moisture pipeline for us here into Kentucky, meaning that we are going to see some pretty decent uh, tropical rains that will sweep in, especially across western uh, parts of Kentucky and west uh, Tennessee, and then eventually into central portions of Kentucky as well. Watch some of these totals come in. You're going to see some pretty decent numbers, two and a half, three inches, and maybe even better than that. The catch is the way that these models sometimes underperform these tropical systems, we could get this in one or two thunderstorms. This whole rainfall potential map is just to give you the heightened alert that we could be dealing with some pretty decent rainfall here over the next several days. And again, maybe in one isolated setting, just like over there in Estill County right now, where it looks like they could be closing in on an inch or better with that one thunderstorm. So it's certainly something we're going to have to watch, guys, the next several days here. And the comfort factor. If it's not raining, it's just going to feel terrible out there. That's just kind of the way it's all laid out there for you. <laughs> That's about as best as you can put it, right? I, just I like, terrible. I like to be simple. <laughs> there you just go. Straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Well, there's a new collision on the north side. This one's at Ironworks Pike and I-75. It's not actually on the interstate, but it's on the ramp to get to the interstate, so that's going to cause some problems there. A couple of crashes on the south side. The Vercel's a new circle that's in an outbound Vercel's road impact. You can see all the red approaching the circle. And then outbound Harrodsburg Road, bumper to bumper right now, from the circle out to Man of War because of a crash near a Cave Hill Lane. To Nicholasville, 16 minutes, Georgetown, 21, and it's uh, about 22 minutes to Paris. Now back to you in the studio. Brian joins us now in the football cats battling for playing time. Yeah, there are several spots on the offense up for grabs, and we also have basketball news. As a fan favorite is changing sports at UK. The details next. UK guard EJ Florial leaving the UK basketball program, but literally just moving across campus. That's where Florial will join his father, UK track coach Edric Florial. The younger Florial will have two years of eligibility left for the men's track team. As a senior, Florial finished fourth in the 100 meters and third in the 200 meters in the Kentucky State Championships after transferring to Dunbar from California. Last year on This Is Kentucky Basketball, Florial talked about his decision to play basketball in UK instead of running track. I just picked basketball because uh, I got hurt real bad in high school and I had to sit out and I just, it hurt me real bad to sit out playing basketball and that's when I decided this is what I want to do. And you know, in high school you can still do a lot of other sports so I continue to do track, but once it was all said and done, I knew the one thing I wanted to do and that was play ball. Now to the gridiron. The football Wildcats put on the pads for the first time this fall. Today, the Cats putting in an installment number five of the offensive side of the ball. Offensive head coach Eddie Grant said the Cats have handled the change in offense really well. One of the groups that's looked good to Grant so far has been the wide receivers. Grant said those guys have worked extremely hard through the first week of practice. The one thing that we have right now that's a great thing at the wide receiver position, we've got guys competing. I mean, they're competing to get on the field, and they're competing at the running back position to get on the field. Justin Riggs is pushing Greg Hart and CJ to, to get on the field. I mean, it's awesome. And when you do that, you got a chance. Landon Young's pressing our guys to go out there and play. And when you have competition, then, you gotta, then that's what's going to make a better uh, a football team. 
EKU football began preseason camp over the weekend. New coach Mark Elder says there is competition at every position, including quarterback. Benny Coney was the starter last season. He's a former transfer from Cincinnati. Last season, throwing for 2,400 plus yards, the second highest single season total in EKU history. Then there's Missouri transfer Matty Mock, who joined the team this summer. Mock was dismissed from the Missouri program and is looking for a fresh start in Richmond. One great thing is is that they've they both led offenses. Um, they've both been out there and won games and been successful. And so they're not walking into a huddle on the sideline and this is the first time that I've had everybody looking at me and, and I have to have all the answers. Uh, or everybody's looking at me and I'm in a leadership role and, and that's a little bit tough. Um, they're not freshmen. They're not, they're not young guys. They've been through that. That's sports. We'll be right back.